So I just got this package from Rugged Ridge and I honestly have no idea what's inside of it. Let's go find out. Ooh, look at that. Instructions. I think we got ourselves a snorkel. Let a little light in here. All right, so now I'm gonna assume that most of you watching this video now already have an idea of what a snorkel is, or at least for a Jeep anyway. And so I won't bore you with all the details as to what it's for or why you might want one for yours. Instead, we're gonna get right to the install of this one made by Rugged Ridge and for a Jeep JL Wrangler or JT Gladiator. And I do need to point out that this install will cover specifically one for a 3.6 liter engine. It's come to my attention that there are slight differences that will be made on a, a Jeep with a two liter turbo, and it certainly won't work on a diesel. So let's get to it. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna to need to do is to remove the air box, and in order to do that, we're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and remove this bolt right here. So now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this hose attached to the air tube by pressing on this gray clip and pulling it out. Then we could take an eight millimeter socket and loosen up the band clamp securing the air tube to the air box. Now that we have all the bolts securing this air box in place, we can go ahead and pull it out of the engine bay. Side for now. All right, so if you look down in here, this right here is the ambient air duct that comes on your JL Wrangler or JT Gladiator. And at least according to Rugged Ridge, it needs to be removed. Um, I'm not 100% convinced of that. I don't think it's gonna do anything to hurt or hurt anything. But uh, for the purposes of this install, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it because that's what the instructions call for. So in order to do that, we're gonna need a flathead screwdriver just like this to remove the six push rivets or push fasteners securing the grill to the front of our Jeep. With all the locking tabs pulled up from the fasteners, we can now grab the whole clip and just pull these guys out like you see here. Okay. All right, so now we can go ahead and pull the whole clip off the front of our Jeep just by pulling forward like this. Unfortunately, we have a winch in the way, so it's gonna make things a little bit more difficult. It'd be nice just to completely remove this. But fortunately, the Gladiator actually has these really large openings in the grill slots itself, so we should be able to still get to these Torx bolts uh, pretty easily. All right, gonna go over to my handy dandy Tecton bit set here. Open this up. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna need a T30 and a T20. Grab an extension. So as you can kind of see right here, or maybe from the top might be better, there's a radiator support rod right here. We're gonna need to loosen up this bolt right here and remove this bolt down here in order to expose a smaller bolt attached behind it. So we're just gonna go ahead and loosen this one a bit. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove this bolt here. Don't wanna lose that guy. Okay, so now with that bolt off, we can go ahead and pull this rod. All right, so now that we've got the radiator support rod out of the way, we can go ahead and remove these two smaller bolts securing the ambient air tube to the front. Okay, 
starting with those off, I think I can go ahead and pull this guy now. All right. Just so I don't forget, I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect the radiator support rod before I do anything else. Tighten this guy as well. Okay. And since we're not gonna to need to do anything else behind the grill, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it as well. Push it into all its clips. And we can go ahead and reinstall these guys. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna have to remove this antenna being that we're gonna have to take off the cowl piece that you see here in order to install the snorkel. And oddly enough, for all the metric parts that are on this Jeep, I mean, virtually everything is metric. For some reason, I've always found that the antennas do a better fit with a 3 8 wrench. So that's what we're gonna use here. If you don't have a 3 8 a 10 millimeter will work as well. It's just a little sloppy. Okay, so now that we have the antenna off, we can go ahead and grab our Torx 40 bit here. So we can remove the bolts that are securing the cowl to the side of our Jeep. Alright, this should come right off now. Just clean a little up while we have the chance. Alright. Just to make it easier to see everything that we're doing here, I'm going to go ahead and push the hood all the way up onto the front of the windshield. Put a rag up here so we don't damage the hood. Okay. Now we have a whole lot more access for the camera, if nothing else. We can go ahead and grab this rubber or foam piece that you see right here and pull this off. It's just held in by glue. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and mark where we need to cut this piece of plastic, which is essentially about right here, this line, and then straight across and over. That whole section will need to come out in order for the air tube to reach the snorkel. Dremel. All right, safety first. Put on some goggles. I should note that if you don't have a Dremel, you can always use something like a utility knife. It's not as clean or perfect, but it does work. And I'm actually gonna use mine to help kind of clean up some of this melted stuff here, as you can see. All right. Oh, by the way, for those of you who may have noticed the new threads I'm wearing, the hoodie, this is now available in our swag store and you can buy one today by clicking on the link below. In doing so, it will definitely support us and we would be super grateful. Okay, with everything trimmed, we can now go ahead and remove this bolt that you see right here, and you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket to do that. All right, moment of truth. Get to install the cowl piece of the snorkel, and I should point out that there's these little rubber trim pieces. All these guys actually need to come off. They're there just for shipping purposes and not necessary for the install. Just slip it underneath the top there. There you go. And then from there, we can go ahead and take the factory hardware. The short ones go here on the side and the long ones go up on top. And once again, using a Torx 40 bit, we can go ahead and secure these in place. This one and this. This. Okay. So what we need to do now is remove this guy right here. This is the splash guard for the air intake into this air box. And you'll notice up here there's a screw or a bolt. And we're going to use an eight millimeter socket to remove it. From there, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver, a nice thin one, a small one. And if you notice right here, you'll see these little tabs. There's one, there's two, three, 
and four. And we're gonna use the screwdriver to carefully pry the splash guard out. Voila. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up the air box itself to remove the air filter. And you can see there's one, two, three, four bolts that we're gonna to need to loosen up. Again, with an eight millimeter socket. Go ahead and pull out the air filter now. And if it's been a while since you've changed your air filter, now might be a good time to do it. You can see we've got quite a few bugs and things like that in, in ours. But for now, I'll set this aside. Otherwise, we can go ahead and empty that out. Whew. All right, so the next step is to make this air box watertight. And as you'll notice here, there are four holes on the bottom of it. So um, normally, Rugged Ridge, I think they're supposed to include little push rivets that you put some silicon on and pop them into these holes. But unfortunately, or fortunately, we have a pre-production kit and I don't think we got any of those. So I went out and thought I had bought some push rivets myself from my local O'Reilly shop down the street. And let's see if I can't open this up. So you can see this is what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some silicone to these and then push them into these holes and that ought to seal them up pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some RTV. This is just some ultra black, basically what you'd use on a differential or otherwise. Open this up, I don't even think I need the nozzle part. I'm going to poke it. Apply a little bit of this stuff on my finger. Smooth it around here like so. And then we'll pop it into the holes. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to keep water from getting into it, which isn't very likely. But in the event that you're actually fording water deep enough that water's gonna hit the bottom of this air box, you're just trying to keep it out. And we're gonna need ourselves a nice step bit, one that goes quite large. All right, so let's get this thing open. This is for the drain valve. In the event that water does get into the air box just for moisture or otherwise, Rugged Ridge actually does provide a little drain kit with a valve, a shutoff valve, so that you can empty that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to locate it right here on the air box on the base where this label is. And a little cushion pad. It's kind of a low point on here. And I'm pretty sure that this valve, let's verify, is about 5 eighths of an inch. Yep. We're going to drill a 5 eighths inch hole. So we're going to locate that here. Okay. Now the reason why I like to use a step bit is that not only does it create a hole large enough for what we're going to need, it also does a really good job of cutting through plastic and creating a nice clean hole. If you don't already have one, I highly recommend you get one for this job. Perfect. All right, so now that we've got our hole drilled, we're gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of RTV on the base of this drain valve. We're gonna install it into this hole with the nipple facing toward the back. You don't have to go crazy with the RTV. We're just basically trying to keep some residual water from getting into the air box. I mean, unless you're planning on sitting your Jeep in a lake like a boat for hours on end, this isn't gonna be a problem. You just wanna make sure there's enough on there just to create a seal. So we're gonna turn the air bath box over. We're gonna take this nut and we're gonna thread it on. So you wanna hold the back of this piece right here and then use your tool. It is plastic, we don't wanna go crazy tight with it but this socket will help make it possible just to get it on a bit tighter. All right, so now we can go ahead 
install this tube onto the nipple. I'll take one of these hose clamps, slide it over, use a Phillips screwdriver to tighten it in place. Slip another hose clamp on, and then take, this is the actual valve portion of this. Put this in place. Okay, and then as you can see here, this is the valve, it's fully open. We're just gonna close it off by turning it all the way down. So if in the future you do have some water, if you open up your air box and for whatever reason there is water in here, all you need to do is open up this valve to help drain it off. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab this gasket and this air box adapter. So you can see here, it's kind of got a D shape to it and so does the gasket. Go ahead and slip that on. Actually, just to verify, it doesn't look like there's a direction that needs to be on, so we'll go ahead and put that on. And then we're gonna attach this onto here. Okay. This might take a little bit of effort. You wanna make sure that these cleats get snapped into place. I heard it snap, I think we're good. All the way around, perfect. All right, so now that we've got the air box adapter installed, we can go ahead and take this rubber grommet that Rugged Ridge provides, and we're gonna slip it into this hole right here. Just kind of pushes in, just like that. Let's go over here. Because this air box adapter is a little bit bigger than what we had before, the battery leads for our winch are gonna to have to be relocated, otherwise it's not gonna actually fit in here anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple wrenches now. A 12 millimeter for the positive cable to get this thing off. And a 13 millimeter for the negative lead. Okay. All right, so now it's about time to install the air box. Unfortunately, when I pulled it out, you see these little rubber feet right here? they came out with the air box. And in order to get it reinstalled, it'll actually be a lot easier to take them off first. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Just takes a little effort, but you can pry them off. Just like that, like that. So if you actually look down inside the engine bay, you'll actually see the holes where these can get attached to. It's kind of a strange thing that there's a third one here, which is actually useless, but these two other holes, we're gonna go ahead and take these guys and reinstall them. So now, you can get this thing, slip it in. Right, that should be good. And go ahead and push down. There, snapped into place. Perfect. Okay, now we can go ahead and secure everything in place using our factory hardware. We're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket to reattach it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab these hoses that are actually gonna fit onto this piece right here, the air tube. And I believe the short one's gonna go on here and the longer one over here. And the easiest way to do that is to actually apply a little bit of soapy water on here and we'll slip them on. <laughs> Now that we've got the hoses attached to the air channel, we're gonna go ahead and take these four clamps and slip them onto either ends of these because we're gonna install them on our Jeep. So uh, just to make sure, the short hose goes on the short end and this is gonna to go toward the air box, the long end goes on the long end of the fitting and this is gonna to go toward the snorkel. I should note on the bottom of the air box, or I'm sorry, the air tube, there is this little notch. This is an indicator that tells you that it should go down and pointing toward the air box. So with that said, I'm gonna make sure that all my clamps have this screw situated pointing outward. This be toward the passenger side of the Jeep so that I can access them with ease. I'm just gonna slide these guys on right now. 
That's one. Here's two. And then on this side, we're going to do the same thing. Okay. So now, we're going to go ahead and install it on our Jeep. So all these fasteners are pointing out toward me. This is located downward. There we go. That's one. And then over here. There we go. So that's on. Get this slipped over here. Make sure this is positioned correctly as well. Using an eight millimeter socket or 516 socket, we're gonna go ahead and secure all these clamps in place. So at this point in time, uh, before I move on any further, I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect my winch power leads so that I don't have to worry about them anymore and then we can wrap things up. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our air filter and of course the lid, which will slip onto the air tube first here. Work it in. Now we're gonna need our eight millimeter socket again, along with an extension and secure it in place. So as it turns out, I went ahead and disconnected this PCV tube uh, from the air tube early on and it turns out that it wasn't necessary on a 3.6 uh, Apparently on a 2 liter turbo it is something that needs to be disconnected because it's actually attached to the air box But for our purposes it was unneeded so I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect it now And if you're watching this video first Before installing your snorkel kit, uh, you'll know that this is something you don't have to take off on to the final steps First I'm gonna go ahead and close the hood Looks like everything is going to clear. All right, the end is near. All we need to do is figure out which snorkel we want to go with. The low profile one, like you can see right here, just secure it in place with four bolts and you're done. Or we can go ahead and install all this extra stuff and get our snorkel way up high. For the purposes of this video, we're actually going to do both. So first off, we'll go ahead and show you what it looks like with the low one, the low profile one. I'm going to take these four bolts that they provide and put on some washers. I'm going to grab this piece right here, place it up on top, and then we'll thread in four bolts. Using a four millimeter Allen wrench, you can go ahead and secure it in place. And just like that, we're done. For the most part, for most people, this is honestly all you're gonna really need. Let me go grab a tape measure real quick. As you can see here, the intake on this, sitting at, at the bottom of it, about 54 inches. That's about four and a half feet off the ground. Granted, we're running 40 inch tires. Not everyone's gonna be having that on their Jeep. But at four and a half feet, if I'm going through water deeper than that, there's a lot more things I need to be worried about. So I think for our purposes, this would be enough. And I like the clean, just smooth look of this. It looks factory. I love it. But just to show you how the rest would get installed, I'm going to do that now. Let me take this one off first. Set that aside. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece here, which is actually the cover piece. You can see the holes are closed off. And before we install it, we're going to go ahead and install these gaskets that Rugged Ridge provides. So first and foremost, we're going to take this piece. You can see it has an adhesive backing and holes for it. You can see it aligns perfectly here. Okay, looks like you can go ahead and pop these guys out first. Go ahead and peel this off that you guys can see here. Very 
There you go. You can see how all the holes are lined up and it follows the shape of this piece here. And then we're going to go ahead and take this big piece that you see, place it inside as such. And then I think we can go ahead and put this on. And there's one last piece that needs to go on this piece right here, this gasket. And I believe it just slips on just like that. Now we're going to take this long tube here and before we do, you'll notice there's a screw right here. There's a rubber stopper here. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to guess. Yep, it fits right in there. And this is probably going to be adjusted so that it can press up against the A-pillar to prevent any rattling. So let me go ahead and get that situated. We're going to use all these longer bolts this time. Slide some washers on. Now we can set this up here. Take a look. It actually pushes up against the windshield right there. So this can be adjusted in and out accordingly so that it will prevent any rattling. Now we can take these longer bolts, slip them in. And then as before, we're going to use a four millimeter Allen wrench to tighten them in place. Last but not least, we're going to grab this band clamp here and the top fitting. We're going to slip this on. Go ahead and place this on top. Position it forward, grab your eight millimeter socket and tighten this thing in place. And there you have it. You look like an overlander. So there was one thing I wasn't 100% sure of. The instructions called for the removal of the factory antenna. I'm gonna go ahead and see if it'll go back on because it looks like it could. Oh yeah, look at that. Maybe they're afraid that it's gonna make contact with that. I'm not 100% sure, but you could totally see it would fit, it would work. Especially if you have the low mounted snorkel, I don't think it'd be any problem running the factory antenna. Oh, one final thought. As you can see, I actually saved all the factory pieces that I removed. And the reason why is that fortunately Rugged Ridge made this kit so that it's completely reversible. If for whatever reason we decide we don't want to snorkel anymore, we want to change things up, keep these parts and you can reinstall them.